Hey guys, it's the December 1st deadline with the CBA, everything. So all the teams are trying to make their Christmas moves. They're trying to do their shopping lists. They're trying to get all the, everything done before there could be a labor uh, shutdown or whatever. And uh, it, the time to sign the players, free agents, make trades, that is now. And we could see a flurry of moves. And uh, the Astros made a free agent signing. It's not the free agent signing you want. And one of the big uh, shortstop uh, names is no longer on uh, the plate. And there's a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about on this Locked on Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric, the man Heisman and Brett. H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Eisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talks Astros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros. Your team every day. Brett, where can they find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram and at Strohs411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Strohs. We hope that you make the Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day, whether that's on YouTube. Keep on subscribing. Keep on liking us. And if you're listening to us on your way to work, on your uh, way home from work or at work with your uh, AirPods, uh, keep on listening to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you, you listen to your podcast, listen to the Locked on Astros podcast. So we got a lot to talk about, but our first topic is going to be welcome Hector Neris to the Houston Astros. The Astros, uh, we'll talk uh, more about this, but they lost um Kendall Graveman uh, to the um, to the White Sox. Then they also lost Yimmy Garcia to the Blue Jays. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. But so they lost two uh, two of the big uh, trades they did over the um, at the trade deadline in 2021, yeah. and now they had to replace them. And so you might be saying, well, why Hector Neris? This is a guy that the uh, that the Phillies lost confidence in last year, and he, uh, he was no longer their closer. He did have 12 saves for them, and his ERA was uh, 3.63. He had 98 strikeouts and 74 and one third innings pitch, but he did pitch. He did throw more innings than any of the Astros relievers did, and there's a lot to like about him. Walks are a little high, but he has a great ground ball rate. This is a guy that the Astros go out and covet. We'll talk. Um, how much did the Astros pay him? Um, they paid him what two years? Uh, was it eight million per year that they give him a sixteen million dollar deal for seventeen? Two years. Seventeen for two. And so a lot of people were like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe you let Kendall Graveman go." But if you look at Kendall Graveman's numbers, Eric, his ex FIP and um, some of those numbers, they were actually a little high. Um, and although um, Nerys does walk a lot, he's never been on the IL. Um, he's very durable, and he's thrown the most innings since 2016 of any pitcher, I believe. And so Nerys is a is a, is a big under the radar pickup, is a James Click style pickup for the Houston Astros. And I think I don't think we'll miss Kendall Grayman. I don't think we'll miss Yumi Garcia. I mean, think about the back end of your bullpen. It's it's Nerys, it's Maton, it's Stanek. And then it's Presley. I mean, that's a pretty strong back into the bullpen. And remember, we struggled last year. And you've got more arms. You've got other people that are that are going to be in the mix, too, in the bullpen. And we'll talk about those at a later show. But Nary's actually tweaked his delivery in July and brought down some of the walks. Um, and I think with the Astros pitching staff and what they do with the pitchers, even with Strom gone, the other two – guys that we have in Miller and Murphy, I think they will do a nice work with him. And they apparently saw something in him that the Phillies didn't. Remember, we got one Charlie Morton from the Phillies. Now, I'm not saying he's Charlie Morton, but remember what we did to Charlie Morton when he came over from the Phillies. Um, and I think he's a, a similar type person where they can depend on him, not just for one or two, but maybe three or four innings and the entire season. So we actually paid a little bit more for Nerys uh, than we did for um, Graveman, but uh, we did it over two seasons versus three exactly. seasons. And you have to understand that Nerys is uh, has uh, he's two years older than Graveman, so you're not going to give the older player the the extra year. That, that's just not what you do at this type of uh, year. So I know I think that Graveman is. Uh, 
he he'll be missed but at the same time he looked dominant at sometimes but then he also looked human yeah at other he times. never you know eric he never he never looked like he settled in after the first like few few times he came in he he, he just never looked ultra comfortable right um one of the things i want to point out to you eric about Neri's is he hides his split finger very well he has the ability to full batters and I, I went back and watched highlights of him. He can full batters with stuff off the plate. He gets swings and misses. When he throws over the plate, the fastball rises a lot. And he's got some of the some of the biggest um, drop, like 16.7 inches, in, in his off-speed pitches. So he has swing and miss ability. Even though his velo had gone down, it actually ticked back up once they tweaked his delivery. And you know they're going to get that spin rate up because it's pretty high with him. And I, I think this is an excellent signing for the Astros. Yeah, his stat cast, his ex-WOBA is 0 0.27. His ex-expected ERA is 299. His expected batting average is 0 0.185. His expected sl slugging was 0 0.317. And that's all in the top 90% of baseball. So that's pretty good. And then uh, if you look at his swing and miss data, it's 31.6%. Uh, uh, through 91%. His whiff percentage is 93%. His chase rate is 93%. That's and huge. he has above average uh, velocity, which is 69%. And his spin rate is 67%. And his average uh, exit velocity is 88.6 uh, to 88%. Uh, so I got this from Larry the GM's um, article recently, and he got that from StatCast. So, uh, and if you look at it, he's actually pretty good versus both left-handed hitters and right-handed hitters. And so yeah. that's what the Astros needed. They needed somebody that wasn't just um, good against. He does. Side. Yeah. Um, I believe he has given up most of the walks to the left-handed side of the plate. I believe if I'm, if I'm not, if um, I'm not looking at his stats directly, but those are things that the Astros. He walks to many left-handed hitters. Okay. That's yeah, what okay. Yeah. So bottom line is this, they know that coming in. And so whatever teams are left-handed heavy, they'll work on him with that. Or maybe he doesn't get as much work with, with a yeah. lineup that has a ton of left-handers. Unless so yeah, so if he can fix that, that would be a, a game changer Heck because yeah. that, that is a big issue for him. So yeah. that's something. So he also does have he does have a forty eight point nine percent ground ball rate, and that's um, the Phillies weren't known for the infield defense. The Astros are, but at the same time, they may not have some guy named Carlos Correa at shortstop. Now, who would they have at shortstop? We don't know at the moment, but uh, so that's something that uh, you have to keep in mind and. Uh, see, he does have the split finger and he does have the 94.1 miles per hour four seamer, 94.8 uh, mile per hour sinker. So that's something that you can look at, but uh, he's got to learn how to throw it, pitch better to the lefties. And that's, yeah, that's something I think the Astros pitching coaches, Miller and Murphy can work on. If I, I'm assuming that they're going to be their pitching coaches. I don't think that's officially been announced yet. Right. Uh, we, we just know that uh, Strami is gone, but this is a under, like you, I think you said that, I think this is a under the under radar, radar, yeah. radar, radar signing for the Astros. This is the uh, James click type of move. You go out and get Ryan Stanek uh, and look how the success he had. This is a guy that fits this kind of the little, I guess the, um, um, the blueprint. He fits the niche they need. Yeah. yeah. So, so here's here's what I realized, and this was an aha moment for me, and, and this is this is going out to all of those who listen to our show on a regular basis. You have to realize that if you see it, the Astros have already seen it. If you see that he hides his split finger, the Astros already know that. And so what we get to discover is what is already known by the Astros. And that's where I think is as as fans, as commentators, you have to trust the Astros front office. When I see all the whining and crying about, oh, Graveman, we lost him. Oh, screw it. And all that stuff. It's like they're like, you know, Crane's no good. I'm like, no, no, no. You got to understand when you see something great about a player, the Astros already discovered that. That's why he's now in the Astros uniform. But Eric, this hot stove is heating up, man. Um, you know, and it's heating up and it makes me think of if it's heating up, I need to be able to watch like MLB network. I got to be able to watch all these shows. So, so 
So I, I wouldn't know, bet on that. I I, I would bet on uh, I would do go to betonline.ag. And, oh, uh, okay, okay, all right. So see, betonline.ag. Now, what you can do is you can go to betonline.ag and you can see where all your favorite players are going. And if you maybe want to bet where Carlos Correa is going, you can look to see the Astros are still in the mix. I don't know, like I don't know who's in the mix anymore. They're all falling by the wayside. But Thanksgiving is over. We had football, but we got bowl season coming up. You, you've had the turkey. You've been betting. Your stomachs are full, but so is your bank account. If you've been going to betonline.ag, it remains the number one spot for all the sports action this Thanksgiving and this holiday season. If you sign up today, you receive a 50% welcome bonus with the promo code locked on to receive your bonus. It's not just football. BetOnline is pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, and your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. BetOnline, we're stuffed with details this holiday season. Yeah, I'm sure you probably watched some football games, and if you didn't have DirecTV, you probably weren't able to watch your football games. So tell us a little bit about DirecTV. The DirecTV stream is this great thing. Does this sound familiar to you? When you catch the game live, you've, you've got one device to do that. You've got another one that lets you stream, stream your favorite shows like Yellowstone or something, and then you watch sports highlights on your phone, and then you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you there's a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle. A great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no, no more needing to go buy another device ever again. The best part, there's no annual contract. That's right, you don't get locked in. Let's get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All righty. So it looks like there's been a flurry of moves. It wasn't just the Astros making the big signing. I put that in air <laughs> quotes. Uh, but a lot of people have been making big signings, and I, I do want to talk about some of those. So uh, Kevin Gossman, uh, but right before we did this show, he uh, apparently, according to Jeff Passan, uh, Passan, he said that um, he uh, that Gossman agreed with the Blue Jays on a five year deal for 110 million. Wow. Uh, Yemi Garcia also uh, reportedly, according to Carlos uh, Biagra, uh, on a uh, uh, agreed with a deal with the Blue Jays. So uh, the Blue Jays, I mean, uh, sorry, the Marcus Simeon. This is the big story because this is kind of the big domino. I know he's yeah. actually signing as a second baseman, so to speak, uh, but this is the big shortstop domino to fall. He signed a seven-year, $175 million deal to play with the Texas Rangers. Yeah, that that shocked me. 31 years old, he gets 7 years, 175 million. That's insane, Eric. I I think I think they overpaid by about 6 million per year, but Rangers are going to Ranger and I really think this is a huge overpayment. 7 years for a 31-year-old shortstop. Now, I hope it worked. Well, I don't know if I hope it works out for them, but I hope it works out for them because I I I I really don't like this move. You know why I don't like this move, Eric? Because it drives the price up on everybody else that hasn't signed. It not only drives the price, but it drives the years. And that almost certainly How much did you say it was AAV? Seven well, seven years, one hundred and seventy five million. So that's like twenty five a year. Yeah, okay. I yeah. thought you said thirty. Um no, no, yeah. Yeah, 25 a year. He was projected to get about 19.8 per year. That's right. about six million over, or a little less than six. But now, you're Carlos going Correa to play is, in Arlington. You got to overpay for that guy. You got to give him the amount of years. I mean, this is not going to be a team like one of Astros Twitter. He could have gone. Said, I know, I know, but I would have. Alyssa I uh, said, um, "Wow, the Astros. I mean, the Rangers could go out there and go crazy and win one more game this year." <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. Um, I hear they are they they went and got Calhoun. I heard they maybe position themselves to also bring in Story or Correa, one of those guys. So they are looking to really stack the deck. They're looking to be the Angels 2.0 of the West, like get all these players and still lose because they have no pitching. But I digress. And you know, Eric, all these moves going on. Um, you saw. Um, uh, Stallings from the Pirates is gone. You also saw um, Fra Adam Frazier go to the go to the Mariners. I know the Mariners have been hot in talks getting 
they're trying to like ramp their team up. The Mariners have been mentioned in possibly going after Story or Carlos Correa, even though they have J.P. Crawford. And um, Corey Seager still hasn't landed anywhere. There's still talk of New York or Detroit for him. Um, the sky's the limit for some of these shortstops now. Um, Seager and Correa easily get eight to ten year deals now. Story gets a six to eight year deal, I think, be- because of this, and it just drives the market up. Yeah. And so according to Jeff uh, Passan, he said the Rangers aren't done, even though they got Marcus Simeon, they're still in the Trevor story uh, sweep, sweepstakes. They went in winter with money to spend. They got a whole lot better Simeon, and now they're targeting more offense as well as starting pitching. And uh, I, I just saw a tweet right now that says that uh, Ken Rosenthal just said that the Rangers are strongly in the mix for free agent right-hander John Gray. Oh wow! Uh, so okay, that's somebody that the that the Astros could also could have actually actually go, gone after. And I saw this. I, I'm not going to even mention it too much, but I saw that the Astros are like some. I'm, I'm not going to even dwell in too much, but somebody saying we're going to go after Joey Gallo of the. No, Yankees. we're not going to go after. That's so that's so dumb. Why would we bring a guy that strikes out that much? We've got a right fielder. His name's Kyle Tucker. You're not moving but, Kyle to center. That's yeah. I saw that. That's foolish. Yeah, I know it's you know there's also there's also report I don't know it's like seeing some of these reports I'm like come on guys like if you, if you got sources at least corroborate it or or you know collaborate with like a big media guy before you go naming before you say you have sources that's that's just dumb. Buxton is uh, staying with the Twins. Uh, yeah. He signed that seven year, hundred million dollar deal, full no trade clause. So wow. Astros fans, we can go ahead and say. Sayonara, he's not coming. Yeah, here. I don't. Yeah, I don't know that I wanted Buxton unless Rogers came along with them. You know, I. You know, good. Good for the Twins. Um, I know there's talk about Cedric Mullins, but I think he's going to cost too much. Yeah, I know that uh, he was mentioned with uh, the Astros' names attached to him, but I looked at his stats. He still has what th- three years of team control. He's coming off his best season. Cedric Mullins is going to cost a lot. You're going to have to give up. Um, a lot. And so uh, we'll have to, we'll have to see what happens there, but I do want to kind of talk about a few things before we end this, this one. And one of the things is uh, with the signing of Nares, this kind of takes away a lot of the Astros flexibility to sign Carlos Correa. And um, if let's just say, we don't know what happens with the CBA, um, what the luxury tax threshold, right. but according to sports track, the Astros will only have about $21 million of, of spending flexibility. That's after signing theirs. Now, to Rizzi. <laughs> now they do need to open up some more space. They do need to open up a spot on the 40 man roster. You know, what's coming up on the first as well. Uh, the uh, non-tender deadline. So, you know, who is a non-tender uh, candidate, somebody who's set to make $3.1 million this year. Who's and that? that is Rafael Montero. Okay, yeah, and the and the Astros, the Astros are gonna are gonna tender his contract. The Astros mm-hmm. are gonna keep him. They're not gonna lose Montero, Garcia, and Graven. They're gonna keep Montero. Montero has a live arm. He's raw, but he's got some tools. Um, I think I think at the you know the they're right at thirty nine man men on their forty man roster. So that so but they that's have one not spot including open. Justin Verlander. So they're gonna have no, to that is, right right. That, that's not including Verlander. Okay, I, I thought Verlander was included in that thirty nine. No, number. he has not officially signed yet. Okay, all right. So, um, you know, at the at the end of the day, the Astros, if if they're going to make a big move or sign a big player, they've got to figure out a way to get rid of some money. I think you can trade Oda Rizzi. I mean, why not? Why not? Why not trade him for some prospects? I mean, I'm sorry, Odo, you're the you're the odd man out here. You're so you know. So real quickly, I, I know that a lot of people don't like us to talk about this, but we got to address it a little bit. Carlos Correa, the suitors for Carlos Correa is kind of going away. Yes, you did mention that the Rangers could still possibly go after Correa, but you just threw a lot of money at um, at Simeon. Are you? Re- I mean, are you really going to throw? I mean, you possibly bring in Story, but Correa is going to not just the money, but you got to do the length as well, the years. So are you really going to go after Correa? So that's the situation. So count them out. 
uh, the Mariners are, um, they did a, uh, like a little photo montage in the Chronicle today of all yeah. teams that he could go to Mariners, I guess are a team he can go to the Tigers. I just don't see them spending the money to go do it. The Yankees, they have the money to possibly spend, or they can go over the cap. Uh, but, uh, with all the stuff about him bashing Derek Jeter and all the bad blood, I don't see that happening. Um, who else am missing? The what Houston Astros. The Houston Astros. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying they're here's the thing, Eric. I, I told you I really think Carlos has priced himself out of the market. I, I just I don't think anyone's gonna give him 10 years. Now, with Simeon signing a seven year deal, his chances go up of, of getting a longer term deal because you got a, an older player demanding a lot more years. I would have never committed seven years to a 31 year old shortstop, but then again, I'm also not a GM. Um, and so I still think here's the thing, Eric. The closer we get to the to the Wednesday date, to December first, and Carlos isn't signed, the more likely he is to become a Houston Astro. I just, if it's an eleventh hour signing, the last team I think on the board is the Houston Astros, and he signs back here. They up the AAV, they bust through that whatever whatever the luxury tax threshold is, they give him six or seven years, they give him 35 a year, whatever they're going to do. And he stays in Houston. I, I just, I think it's a real possibility now, but then again, Simeon may, may have driven the market up and shipped him off to New York or wherever else. Who knows? That's the a lot of, of money. That's a lot of money no, for, no, uh, no. especially when you only have 21 million before you go. Oh, tr- oh no, no, trust me. I know that's like completely breaking through that. And I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking. I'm just saying it just points to him coming back here because of the way the market's gone. But I may be 100% wrong. This this is completely off a hunch. This isn't like oh, sources from the Astros tell me this. No, it's just I have this hunch that he either ends up in New York now or in Houston. I mean, God, I would hate for him to what be What if it's Yankee. the Dodgers? Because the Dodgers not, were no, the No, they've got team. Trey Turner. They got Trey Turner. Yeah. They got but, Trey Turner. You're not going to know. You got like, no. They can move Trey Turner to second base. Uh, they could. Yeah. I don't, dude. You know what? I'm, I'm done guessing. I'm, I'm tired of guessing. Um, Let's just, uh, just Carlos freaking sign somewhere, please, sir. And quit teasing right. us on Twitter or quit, t- quit teasing me on Instagram with songs in Spanish. Say, your stay. Spanish stay. And you're wearing your Astros gear, put together your baby stuff. Quit teasing me, Carlos. Just become an Astro for life. We'll put a statue out in front of Mid Maid Park. Let's go, baby. All right. So, guys, uh, with all the, the next 24 hours, we'll probably do another podcast tomorrow because there's probably be a lot of excitement. We're, we're about to do another one with Sean Dubin right now. We already did one with Joe Perez. Keep on tuning in to the Locked on Astros podcast all off season, And we got a lot to talk about, baby. This is going to be interesting off season. A lot of big moves to make, and the Astros made a big addition by bringing in Naris. So now we'll see what happens from here. You've been listening to Locked On Astros podcasts, and we'll be back tomorrow with another podcast. Go Strohs.